to Easy Mind, Easy Life. Now, speaking of who we are, did you know that you are loved so much that you have been given over 50 trillion cells inside your body? There are over 50 trillion cells working on your behalf, working to keep you alive. And recently I had an expansion of awareness <laughs> when I heard that each cell has intelligence. Each cell has this universal life force energy contained within it. That over 50 trillion cells that's inside your body. Did you know that? It already has the same intelligence as is in everything else. It's that it even comes in that tiny. <laughs> and so with that awareness, I realize when people are saying, be careful of your words, the words that you use, be careful. Now, let's picture this. You've got over 50 trillion cells working inside of you. And they're all at your command, right? You're the boss here, right? So every time you look in the mirror and you say to yourself, or you think, you don't even have to say it, you think, I'm fat. Those cells get to rearranging themselves because you are the ruler of this universe, of this body. You have complete control over this. So every time you think, I'm fat, those cells get to rearranging. Oh, we need to be fat because she said, I'm fat. So that's what we need to be. That's just one thing. Think of all the thoughts that you have throughout the day that relate to your body. When you tell your body it's ugly, your body's listening. Your cells are rearranging themselves. Oh, she wants us to be ugly. They don't judge whether it's good or bad. They don't judge your cells, just like everything else in the universe. It doesn't judge this intelligence, doesn't judge that it's good or bad or it's right or wrong. It's just listening to your commands. And if you're telling yourself, even with your thoughts, you're telling yourself that I'm fat and I'm stupid and whatever other things you're saying to yourself, these cells are constantly rearranging themselves to give you what you are asking for even if it's not intentionally what you want <laughs> but they're your predominant thoughts and the cells inside of you are constantly listening to your thoughts to what it is that you are saying because to them everything you think and everything you say is a command now Let's be honest with ourselves. How many of us sit and think thoughts of healing? Okay, we may have issues throughout our body. Because the other thing is, when we go through years of anger, and we go through years of pain, distress, stress, uh, anger, guilt, shame, all those fear, right? All those lower vibrating energies. And you're constantly stuck in those thoughts and those words, right? Of lower vibrations, guilt, shame, fear, pain, stress, all of that that you're doing. The cells inside your body are constantly working with that. They're constantly working with that. And what happens is they will take on certain parts of your body. They will manifest there. They will hold that pain there. They will hold that guilt there. They will hold that shame or that fear or whatever it was that you kept constantly thinking over and over and over, that anger. Mine happened to be in the gallbladder, you know. Uh, but it, it, your body will hold it in different parts. It'll hold on to it. That the cells will keep working in that place, under that pain, under that anger, under that stress. And eventually that is what turns into dis-ease, dis comfort in your body is your body trying to tell you that this is what you've stored here 
Is it time to let it go? Is it time to look at the truth of it? Because that's what all these videos are for, getting you back to the truth of who you are. And all of this stuff that you store in your body, all of it has nothing to do with who you are. That beautiful energy that is inside of you has nothing to do with all of this out here. Now, I know there's going to be many of you out there thinking, well, what about <laughs> when you're born with something genetic or you're born with, um, or you get, you know, along the way. Many of the diseases do come from, and I call it dis eases because your energy, your body, your flow is not at ease. It's not going with the flow. You're not following your soul to what it came here to experience. You're trying to go against it. <laughs> You're trying to do your own thing. That's the ego. It's trying to do its own thing. And you're not really following what you actually came here to do. This body is just a vessel. It's like a car you're driving around in, right? It's not who you are. Okay, we talked about you, you're not the clothes you wear, you're not the car you drive, you're not the house you live in. This body is not who you are either. Did you know that? This body is not who you are. It's just a vessel. It's just something you move around in while you're here to experience all these wonderful things. <laughs> so, going back to the topic of what we think is what we create. Now, for those who come in with a genetics disease or something chronic that they have to live through for a certain period or even towards the end, that's how they finish this lifetime, right? That's how they end it. That is something your soul came here to experience. That pain, that suffering, that, that experience, it wanted to know what. Because like I just said, we are not a physical body, right? The spirit. It's going to be here way after your physical body's come and gone, right? It's going to, it's infinite. It leaves the body when it's done with the body, right? So, what happens with the body when it's here, you know, if it's decided, oh, I'm going to come in in the last 20 years, I'm going to have this chronic disease and see how it affects everyone around me and see what, how it affects, you know, what experience I have through that. Because many times we don't think, but in having those sorts of diseases, that creates opportunities for others to show compassion, to show kindness, to express, sorry, compassion, express kindness. You know, I know two different cases where a partner got MS and in one case, after 10 years, the partner left. And in the other case, it's been 20 years and that partner's still there. And it's not that one's better than the other. Not, you know, I'm not going with judgment on that, right? I'm not, I'm not going there. Because <laughs> I said goodbye to judgment a long time ago. And so when it comes in, I'm like, what are you doing here? What do you want? You know, why am I, Why are you even here? <laughs> I say to judgment all the time. Um, because where there's judgment, there's a lack of love. There's a lack of understanding for the situation at hand. That's all judgment is. When you're judging it, you're not looking at it through the eyes of love. That's the reality of judgment. It's the same as fear. Where there's fear, there's a lack of love. You're not looking at it through the eyes of love. And in both cases of the MS, it created an opportunity for someone to experience something. And for the person that has it, that has the chronic disease, but also for the person who is the carer or the people that are affected by it, if there are children involved. How are the children affected? How does it make them feel? What is their experience? There is just, there's so much going on. It's never just about the one soul. That's why, there, you know, I always go back to there's only one in the room because this one in the room is experiencing through all of us, all of these wonderful experiences. Not good or bad, just, they just are. And it experiences it through the person that has the chronic disease and it experiences the it, the intelligence, the, uni the this beautiful universe, the energy. It experiences it through the person that has the chronic disease. It experiences 
from the person that's the carer. It experiences from the neighbors that are affected. It experiences it from the children that were born from this relationship, if there were any, right? It is experiencing this one chronic disease through dozens of other people that are affected by it, not just the one person. We never look at the whole picture, we just look at the one. I think, why me? Why me? Why is this happening to me? You know, it's so easy to step into, I'm the victim. But I always see it as, oh, it's an opportunity. No matter what is happening, it is an opportunity always for the soul to experience. The little souls that are all involved and then the one big one. You know, the, the one. <laughs> so, mm, we'll talk more about this in the next one. But for today, you know, if you're relatively healthy and you've got bits and pieces here and there you don't have chronic disease or anything like that I'd like you to start thinking of your thoughts that may have created the discomfort you know wherever it's stored in your body whether it's your heart your lungs your gallbladder digestive system your reproductive system you know what's happened to you there that you've stored this this discomfort there this dis-ease what thoughts could have been stored there? And if you're not sure, what you can do is you can sit with it. Sit with your hands there. Sit with your hands there, wherever it is, and ask it. Tell me, what is it that I have stored here? What have I stored here? Tell me what I need to know. And give it time, because if you're not used to receiving the messages, <laughs> it may take a few days, but give it time. But ask. That's how I got here. I just kept asking and asking and asking and I just wouldn't take no for an answer. I just ask. Ask. You know, like I said, the universe is talking to us all the time. You just have to know how to listen. All right, I'll go on to the next video because this one's gone on a little bit, little bit long. I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.